Please do welcome and congratulate those that are here of the team members. The coach, Rick Scott, runners, Jackie Benning, and Kirsten Knoppeball. <laughs> there you go. Also with us tonight are our award donors, Lee and Beth Goldie, um, Marjorie Brent. And on behalf of Grant and Arlene Nickel, we have Darren Orland and his wife, Chris, and Tracy and Matt Kostiuk. Uh, we also want to thank our sponsors, Skyline Well Testing, Terra Energy Services, and here tonight representing them is Jason Yetman and his wife, Jackie. We have Pomeroy Lodging, represented by Marjorie Brent. Uh, service Plus Inns and Suites, and then we have over there in the corner, hiding away, Adventure Physiotherapy and Brian Shirk, one of our Bulls alumni as well. And now we're going to have some of the opening remarks, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the President and CEO of Northwestern Polytechnic. Please welcome Dr. Vanessa Shane. Thank you, Francois. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here tonight to celebrate our athletes, our teams, and the staff that work so hard to, to give their athletes the experiences that they have. So I want to start by welcoming our Wolves staff, coaches, guests of honor, and of course, our athletes to tonight's Festival of Gold celebration. I'm pleased to be here tonight celebrating all that you've accomplished this season. It's been a joy watching your teams compete this year, and you should all be very proud of how far you've come. I know the amount of hard work and dedication required. Actually, I, I don't, really. Um, I will say, and I said this to the women's basketball team at the start of the season. You know, when I played a couple decades ago, the athletes that played today are much better athletes. We didn't have strength and conditioning coach. We didn't have gym time. And so when I played and the dedication it took to be an athlete, you guys have twice as much, if not more. So. With that, you have invested countless hours in the pursuit of becoming fierce competitors, achieving personal bests, and contributing to team success. And you do this all while balancing your education and your other responsibilities. I hope that regardless of winning or losing records, you take with you the life experiences that you've gained from being a student athlete at NWP. Sharing a passion for sports and spending countless hours with your teammates in locker rooms, practices, bus rides, or flights to Hawaii has turned your teammates into lifelong friendships. I hope that the bonds you have made as a member of the Wolves and that the lessons you have learned on, off the pitch, the court, or the track last you a lifetime. I want to extend a special thank you to our NWP athletic staff and Wolves coaches for making a difference in the lives of each athlete here with us tonight. Our athletes are truly so fortunate to grow under your leadership. Just know that your dedication does not go unnoticed. 
You're not just coaching a game or hosting a home game. You're leaving a lasting impact on the athletes. So please, everybody, join me in giving a round of applause to the coaches and the athletic staff. And to our athletes, tonight is about you. Thank you for representing NWP with pride and for being leaders in our community. Thank you for choosing NWP to further both your education and your athletic journey. Your potential is endless, and I look forward to hearing about your future accomplishments and victories. And remember, once a wolf, always a wolf. Go Wolves, thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. And now, would you please welcome the manager of athletics, Lauren Hale Miller. Uh, she has some things to say. And I should mention she's the Wolves fashionista who directed me to uh, ensure that I had this beautiful, bright pink tie representing the new colors. I had to do something while I was waiting for you to arrive. Ladies and gentlemen, Lauren Hale Miller. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Festival of Gold is a great opportunity for us to come together and celebrate the success of Wolf student athletes and Wolves athletics. Being a Wolf comes with a tremendous amount of responsibility and hard work, and it's been an honor to watch your journey this past season. For those of you who are graduating or moving on, I wish you the best with your future endeavors. For those of you who, who will return next season, I look forward to seeing the continued impact you will have on Wolves Athletics. Thank you. We should time that. That's probably the briefest speech we've ever had. It beats me by quite a margin. Each year we recognize the contributions of Wolves supporters. Many people have played a major role in the legacy of the Wolves program. Tonight we are reminded about the wonderful people who have graced us with their presence. It is now time for us to present our memorial awards. Once the award recipients have been announced, they are asked to enter on that end of the stage. Uh, they will then come and receive their award and then go off this way, this side, where Kelsey is going to take their picture. And then once they're done that, then they can return back. So that's right through the entire evening. Uh, for each of the awards that we do, I will present a brief history of the person uh, then uh, the award is named after, and then note the selection criteria, and then announce the winner. So first off, I'm going to ask Darren Oyland to please uh, come forward as we're going to present the Daryl Nickel Memorial Basketball Award. <laughs> Daryl was a very caring, happy, and thoughtful, gentle son. He lived life and lived it to the fullest. He was very athletic, and his passion was the sport of basketball. If he wasn't playing a game or at a practice, he was home shooting hoops and dribbling the ball on the driveway. If no friends were available to play a game on the driveway, he was watching a game on TV. He was proud of himself for being the top scorer while attending high school. We were very proud parents of his accomplishments. Our lives changed forever on July 14th, 1987 when we lost him along with his girlfriend and his best best friend to a tragic automobile accident to keep daryl's memory alive even with all the joy and sadness it brings we decided to set up a memorial basketball award at the college we know in our hearts that he would be so proud of this the recipient must be a member of the men's vault wolves basketball team selection will be based on basketball ability and preference will be given to a student from the Peace Region. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's recipient of the Daryl Nickel Memorial Basketball Award is Brandon Gillis. Congratulations, Brandon. Well done. Okay. 
I now I'm going to ask Mr. Ron Thompson, probably the most decorated coach that we have in the Bulls history, to please come forward to present the Arthur Dunn Memorial Award. And the fan club is here. Arthur Dunn, while not an athlete himself, was a big fan of many sports and loved coaching his daughter's minor soccer teams. He discovered and began playing rec volleyball as an adult, which led to his becoming a huge fan of the GPRC Wolves volleyball teams. Every home game weekend, Art and his family could be spotted up in the stands cheering on the local squad. He loved the game, knew all the players' names, and he even became involved in the adopt a Wolf program. He would proudly boast whenever his adopted son or daughter made a great play at, uh, or scored a point. Art also became a volunteer driver for the teens when GPRC hosted nationals. After Art's passing in 2001, the athletics department approached Art's family about setting up a scholarship in his name, which is why we now have the Arthur Dunn Memorial Volleyball Award. The award recipient must be a member of the Wolves volleyball team, maintaining a satisfactory academic standing. Team players will nominate a teammate, an unsung hero, who may not be recognized by the coach. Nominations will be based on team spirit, involvement, overall positive attitude, demonstrated maturity, dedication, and strong work ethic. This year's recipient of the Arthur Dunn Memorial Volleyball Scholarship Award is from women's volleyball player, Harspreet Dollywall. Congratulations, Harris Creek. I now ask Marjorie Brent to please come forward to present the Tim Pomeroy Memorial Volleyball Award. Tim grew up and attended school in Fort St. John, BC. He played volleyball throughout junior and senior high and at GPRC in his first year of college. He planned to return to GPRC, but sadly he was taken from us during the summer following his first year. He loved the sport of volleyball. The scholarship was set up to honor his memory and help another student fulfill his or her dream of playing at the college level. The award is available to a men's volleyball player who is continuing at NWP or a university transfer program. The successful recipient must demonstrate the characteristics of Tim Pomeroy, including leadership, positive attitude, enthusiasm, and a passion for the team, the program, and the sport. This year's recipient of the Tim Pomeroy Memorial Volleyball Award is Carter Tuttle. I was sure he was going to just jump onto the stage. All right, congratulations, Carter. I'm now asking Tracy and Matt Koshik to please come forward to present the Gary Koshik Memorial Volleyball Awards. Gary Koshik was an extraordinary, kind, and wonderful, funny man. He was competitive, enthusiastic, and an above and beyond kind of man, whether as a father, husband, or in his own athletic endeavors. His passion for life and humor is a lesson to all of us. Gary was a huge fan of GPRC Wolves Volleyball and was committed to positively supporting and loudly cheering on his four children and their teammates over the years. Before Gary's passing, he met with the athletics department to express what he wanted these awards to represent. The award is available to BC or Alberta Peace Region residents who are members of the NWP women's or men's volleyball teams. The successful recipient will be the hardest worker on and off the court including practices, can be a starter or a bench player who enthusiastically supports the team and exhibits a winning attitude. 
The recipients for the Gary Koscik Memorial Volleyball Awards are, for women's volleyball, Erica Pelushi, and for men's volleyball, Josh Dumont. Congratulations to Erica and Josh. We are now going to move to the Leadership Awards for this evening. We have a couple of new awards being introduced. Tonight, we'll get to them in a minute. First, it's time to present the Gervich Burnham Cross Country Running Award. And I ask Chris Nellison and Fabio Minoso to please come forward to present the Gervich Burnham Cross Country Running Award. There they are. The idea of the Gervich Burnham Cross Country Running Award was to provide a scholarship to a member of the cross country running team that both reflected their athletic as well as scholastic abilities. Gervich Burnham are very proud of their ongoing donation to Wolves Athletics and the cross country running teams, both male and female. Over the years, they have received numerous thank you notes from the athletes who have received their funding and they have appreciated their sincerity and devotion to their causes. Many have gone on to achieve national standing as well. The award recipient must be a member of the Wolves Cross Country Running Team for a minimum of one year and must have achieved a minimum GPA of 2.0 in the last year of study. This year's recipient of the Gervich Burnham Cross Country Running Award is Lydia Stenke. Congratulations, Lydia. Yeah. Look, at your picture tape. look at the guys, look at that pink tie. Yeah. He got the memo. He got the memo. All right. <clears throat> I'm now going to ask the NWP Indigenous Liaison, Desiree Mirren, and the president of the Circle of Indigenous Students, Dominic Field, to please come forward to present this new award. They will describe the award and declare the recipients. The award is the Indigenous Student Athlete Award. Hello everyone and congratulations <coughs> to all of you gorgeous wolves out there. My name is Dominique Field and I am a proud Métis woman. I am the NWP Circle of Indigenous Students President and I'm very honored to be here tonight. Thank you. So tonight I am honored to be introducing the new Indigenous Student Athlete Award, Musquisi Mahigan. Translation is strong wolf. And to be a strong wolf is to be ambitious, resilient, intelligent, and committed to helping the pack. A strong wolf is someone who tries hard and doesn't give up. They will face challenges head on. A strong wolf is proud of who they are and who they come from. This award is important because it has given the opportunity to recognize and celebrate the successes of, of our indigenous student athletes here at NWP. Coaches put forward names and reasons of why they believe these athletes should get the award. The Circle of Indigenous Students had reviewed the list and we voted on both a women's and men's Indigenous student athlete. While discussing the award, my team, with my team, we had all agreed that the person presenting the award uh, should be someone who has shown true dedication and support to the Wolf Pack. I would now like to hand off the mic to Desiree Marin, the Indigenous Liaison Coordinator. Thank you. Hello everyone. Thank you to all the coaches for your nominations 
and thank you to the Circle of Indigenous Students for selecting the recipients of the first Moscow C. Mahigan Indigenous Student Athlete Awards. I want to personally thank all the athletes, coaches, and athletic staff for an amazing year of, War of Wolves Athletics. My grandson and I have made many memories cheering on and supporting the NWP Wolves. I can't thank you enough for making this gymnasium such a special place. The first recipient has been a member of the women's basketball team for three years. She has maintained, a maintained a strong, strong grades throughout her time as a student athlete. In her time as a Wolf, she has been the Women's Basketball Team Rookie of the Year and has been named their most valuable player for the 2022-23 season. And I have personally seen her intercept passes, fly down the court, and sink some sweet shots. She also volunteers to work in local schools with various sports, sport clubs and school teams. The recipient of the first NWP Muscoasi Mahigan Indigenous Student Women's Athlete Award is awarded to Raylene Badger. Congratulations, Raylene. It has been a pleasure watching you play. A recipient of the first NWP Muscoasi Mahigan Indigenous Student Men's Athlete Award consistently stands out as a top performer. His commitment to academic excellence is evident in his dil diligent approach to learning. In the realm of athletics, he has displayed remarkable dedication and, and, and improvement. His notable achievement includes securing a position in the top 20 at the 2023 ACAC Alberta Provincials. Beyond his academic and athletic pursuits, the recipient is deeply engaged with the Grand Prairie community and, active, and actively contributes to the Indigenous community. He exemplifies true leadership qualities, serving as an inspiration to fellow athletes, students, and the broader community. And I personally greatly admire this student athlete. He always brings his best to whatever he does, and I am thankful that I had the opportunity to get to know him. The recipient of the first NWP Musco Asi Mahigan Indigenous Student Men's Athlete Award is awarded to Colton Mitchell. Congratulations, Raylene and Colton, and congratulations to all of you here tonight. And again, I thank you for so many special memories. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I gotta try to get me one of those. <laughs> it's better than the pink tie, really. I'm just kidding. I'm now going to ask Bill Bradley to please come forward to present the Women's Basketball Leadership Award. What did he say? He wants Barb to do it? Barb Schmier? Okay. Here she comes. Ladies and gentlemen, Barb Schmier. This award was created by the Basketball Alumni to recognize those who are leading the pack 
both in the classroom and on the court. It is awarded to the female basketball player with the highest GPA. In the event of a tie, the player with the highest points per game is selected. The inaugural recipient for this award is Mighty Mac, Michaela Porteous. She is. Congratulations, Michaela. Congratulations. Thank you. Right. It's now time for the Iron Wolf Award. Please welcome Wolves strength and conditioning coach and Wolves volleyball alumna, Jamie Strokes, to the stage to introduce the awards and announce the winners. Another year done. Um, I think this is the first year since I've been here where no bands have went missing at all out of the High Performance Center. We did lose a few lacrosse balls, a medicine ball, and ended up with a hole in the wall. But the bands all stayed, so that's good. I am still waiting to learn who put the hole in the wall, though, so if anyone wants to fess up to that tonight. <laughs> This year was also a big year for improvements across all sports within the weight room. Every day I'm grateful that I get to work with and get to know each and every one of you. You all have made so much progress this season, whether it was in your movement quality, strength, speed, overall athleticism, or just your dedication to your training. You should all be proud of how far you have come and everything you have accomplished this year. Some of the big improvements included 12 women's athletes getting their first chin up, and even more that can now rep out numerous chin-ups. We have numerous women's athletes that can now trap bar over 300 pounds and squat more than their body weight. We had all of the men's soccer players hit PRs at their postseason testing. <laughs> we had 10 men's volleyball players increase their, increase their touch height by at least two inches. We had John, who shocked everyone when he just kept piling on 45-pound plates at the combine <laughs> to hit 510 pounds. We also got to see just how competitive some athletes can get when bragging rights for top lift and a pizza party are on the line. That combine ran way longer than I had anticipated it would. <laughs> but amongst all of these successes and numerous others, there are ultimately two athletes whose overall strength athleticism, motivation levels, and dedication to not only their training, but their recovery and nutrition go unmatched. They never need to be told to lift heavier or work harder, always giving 100% effort and focus to every exercise that they do. Both have hit numerous PRs this season, and through their extraordinary work ethics, they inspire not only their teammates, but athletes from other teams as well. They are the true definition of an iron wolf. This year's recipients, for the second year in a row, from women's basketball, Abby Crown, and from men's volleyball, Justice Bigstone. Congratulations. Outstanding. It's now time for the Academic Excellence Awards, and we now ask Wolves Royalty, Lee and Beth Goldie, who are also on the Wolves Wall of Fame, to please come forward and present the Academic Awards. As Lee and Beth will be in all of the pictures, we're going to ask the recipients to wait here in the photo booth area, and then at the end of all of the Academic Awards, Lee and Beth will join them, and we'll be happy to be with them in all their little photos. Okay, the first award is the highest academic standing of each, um, each Wolves team. To be selected for this award, the student athlete must have the highest GPA on the team. 
Congratulations to this year's top academic student athletes per team. Please come to the stage to receive your award as your name is called, and we're gonna call them in rapid order. First of all, men's basketball, Mason Chestowich. <laughs> Women's basketball, we got a few of them. Alyssa Gallant. <laughs> Abigail Crown. <laughs> Michaela Porteous. And the other Abigail, Abigail Cramps. And I believe they were all 4.0s. Cross country running, Clinton Owusu. I don't know if I got that name pronounced correctly. Thanks, Clinton. Mid soccer, Evan Dirksen and Edison Travers. <laughs> Women's soccer, Chantel Kirk. Robin Alexandrick and Ashley Hodel. Men's Volleyball, Logan Halachuk. Women's Volleyball, Harshpreet Dollywall and Robin Alexandrick. My goodness, I'm the shortest guy up here. <laughs> oh, well, and there's Beth, too, so we're okay. This is fantastic. Most of these athletes, just about all of them, at 4.0 GPAs, which is an outstanding performance. Congratulations. Yeah, now you can fall. And then they'll hang down there with the individual pictures, and then... No, I know. Edison, he's not here. Okay, Edison Travers, who's not here, also won this award. Yeah. Okay. Now the award for the Wolves team that achieved the top overall GPA. This award is determined by taking each of the players' GPA and averaging them out. The team with the highest overall GPA wins. This is one of the most coveted team awards and always generates a great deal of excitement. This year's winning Wolves team has achieved an average GPA of 3.58. Congratulations, Wolves Cross Country Running. All oh, the entire team, you can come up on stage. They're gonna give the award to just a few of you, but come on, bring them up. Come on up, come on, hurry, run. There it is, there, uh, there's a little excitement coming up. And there they are, this is amazing. 3.5 GPA is an average cross country running. Yeah, and then just keep going, and then they'll meet you down there after. That's well done. Good job. Good job. Good job. Yeah, down here, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. You want, you should be listening. All right. Well, Lee and Beth can't go just as yet. The CCAA Academic All-Canadian Award is the CCAA's most prestigious student-athlete honor epitomizing a commitment to academic success and athletic achievement. The athlete must attain honors role in their academics and be selected to the ACAC All-Conference team to be eligible for this award. This year's CCAA Academic All-Canadian is from Women's Volleyball. Please give it up for Evangeline Zaya.
Okay, say, anybody know any jokes? Lee and Beth are tied up. We're just going to wait for a second because they have to present the award to Evangeline. Oh. Look, I don't wanna talk. How you try and press the kid and read it, you was soft. Oh, you know what's capping, homie, you don't know the law. Pedal to the metal, you ain't catching me in park. I just hit the stop, I don't wanna speak. Talking all that good, so I just hit you with the plays. Running up the score like Tyreek, I'm going deep. Watch me how I'm saucing, I be spreading it with ease. You gon' see the peace, you gon' see the flex when you hear these written. Trust me, you know the difference. I got a long ways to climb before you see a slippage. I see the process and the journey I'm supposed to be, but perplexed. Cause I don't really see nobody close to me. Hopefully, this ain't wasted, and I know it ain't. You gotta take the time for seasoning to marinate. In the gym, on the field, around the track, or roaming the perimeter, we move with purpose. We aren't afraid to put in the work for our pack. Whether we are training, competing, or cheering, we dig in and leave our mark. So Lee and Beth just congratulated Evangeline Zaya on winning the CCWA Academic All-Canadian Award, which I think is just really fantastic. <clears throat> that is such a, that's a, such a tough award to win. You have to be really good in your sport and you have to be really good in the classroom. So it's, that's what you're here for, to do extremely well with your academics and do very well with your sport. So uh, congratulations to them. Team awards. This is now part of the most exciting, when the coaches get a chance to come up here and say a few words about their team and their year and then present some awards. The three awards they're going to present to their team are the Dedication to the Pack Award, Rookie of the Year, and the Most Valuable Player. And we're going to start with men's volleyball. So I'm going to ask another royalty, Ron Thompson, to please come forward. Say a few words about the men's program. 
we're very uh, excited and pleased that Ron, partway after the season started, was able to step up and step into the role of the Wolves men's volleyball head coach. And he did a fantastic job and made the, the season that much better for his squad. So here's Ron Thompson. Uh, thank you. Uh, and good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, yes, I'm presently the head coach of the men's volleyball program here. Um, I'm also a former, longtime employee, um, alumni coach, and alumni player back in the day. So um, this. This uh, opportunity this year was a little bit interesting for us, and uh, I'll just kind of share a little bit of um, a few things about about uh, our team anyways. Um, so on behalf of the team, I just wanted to thank everybody that's involved in athletics, um, athletic department, and those that support athletics. I think there's a lot of uh, donors and friends that are here that it's really a treat and a pleasure and an honor to have you staying involved with our program over the years. I think um, it's such a privilege to be able to participate in post-secondary athletics as an athlete and as, and as a coach. Um, it's lucky and I think over my uh, lifespan of uh, a student and coach and stuff, I can think back to so many friends and um, memories that come through that, those uh, experiences uh, that it's uh, really, really, uh, I think, a privilege to be involved in post-secondary athletics. Um, so I want to thank my family for supporting me again this year, coming out of retirement that way. <laughs> um, I'm lucky. I'm lucky to be able to do something that I love and have the support at home to do that. A uh, couple of special thanks uh, to Jamie Strauss uh, for everything that she did with our group of athletes and all of you. I think she's a really special person to be able to work, work with and uh, does a great job in sort of training us to, a, I think, a new level, a cutting edge level, and I, I really appreciate that. Uh, I also want to thank Lauren Hale Miller for <clears throat> all the support for me behind the scenes, kind of coming in uh, late to the picture this year. It was really nice to have someone in the background sort of helping me. <clears throat> I want to thank my associate head coach, Hugh Bartlett. Um, yeah, we, we couldn't have done this without you. You are a great partner and teammate and it was definitely great to work with you again. Thank you. Um, our, our season was an interesting experience. Um, Hugh and I, uh, as mentioned, uh, joining the team partway through this season was a big challenge. We often said that the first six weeks that we missed at the beginning of the, the year with the guys was probably the most valuable time that we should have had with them. Um, and made, probably would have made a big difference for us in the end, but uh, it is what it is. Um, um, we, we did it, <laughs> and we survived is what we'd like to think. Uh, I really want to thank the players for accepting, accepting us and working with us uh, through a bit of the challenging times that we had. Um, seasons are made of uh, memories uh, created throughout the season. And uh, we definitely created some uh, great memories through our travel, our training, and competition. So thank you, guys. Uh, on to our awards, our dedication of the pack. Uh, I will give you the, the recipient of this award, and then I'll just say a few things about this person. Dedication to the pack this year uh, goes to uh, a true wolf, a longtime wolf, uh, Chad Morrison. Um, Chad's, Chad's value to the program goes beyond the value of kills, blocks, digs, serves that are accumulated through the season. I think Chad's value comes in the leadership he's provided over the last five years. He's been instrumental in leading by example. He's shown players over the years how to be supportive and be a kind uh, teammate, a, a kind teammate. 
He's demonstrated how to be competitive, a, a competitive player that is respectful of the opponent, and he has been a great role model within the community. Thank you, Chad, uh, for your dedication to the program, program and congratulations. Uh, Rookie of the Year, uh, the recipient this year is Logan Hladchuk. Uh, Logan, Logan had an outstanding season for us as a first year player, starting in 18 of the 19 matches. Logan accumulated 54 kills, 28 stuff blocks, 6 service aces. Logan was new to playing in the middle position and was definitely undersized by league standards, standards, but managed an impressive season. Logan has a great work ethic and a passion to get better. Accepting the role of a new position in a team sport is what great players do to make teams better. And we were happy to see uh, Logan be willing to give up sort of the me for the we and help make our team better in the long run. And we appreciate that, Logan. Congratulations. <clears throat> this year's most valuable player is Justice Big Stone. <clears throat> um, not, not an easy decision with our team, as I think there were several players who had good seasons. But Justice had an exceptional season, proving to be one of the top middle blockers in the province, finishing second in the league for stuff blocks. In addition, Justice was an important leader within the team, a quiet leader who led through his actions, one of the most dedicated and committed players in the program. Justice was a pleasure to coach. As a veteran player, he was always willing to try new things, to change, and improve as the season progressed. Congratulations, Justice, on a great season. Thank you, Ron. And now, please welcome the head coach of the Wolves women's volleyball team, Lauren Hale Miller. Say a few words about the Wolves women's volleyball program and hand out some awards. All right, hello everybody again. Now to speak about women's volleyball. Um, our women's volleyball team had quite an eventful year, all the way from winning some important and emotional games to getting sea urchins in our feet in Hawaii. <laughs> I'm extremely proud of this group of athletes for their determination and grit this season. We have pushed our program further ahead and have created a great foundation for our future. Thank you to my coaches, Crystal and Alex and Ron when he was with us for a short six weeks. For their continued support, guidance and friendship, I could not do this without all of you. Thank you to my athletes for your continued trust in me and this program. It's an honor to share this journey with you and I am grateful that I get to spend my time learning from you every day. I'm very proud of all of you. Now for our awards. Dedication to the pack. This athlete joined our program in 2021. Throughout her time with us, she has played many roles on and off the court. She has always been someone that we can rely on whenever we need her. In her last year as a wolf, she juggled a crazy schedule playing two sports, but still always found a way to show up for her, show up at her very best. We are truly going to miss this girl next year. Dedication to the pack goes to Robin Alexandra.
Okay, Rookie of the Year. This athlete created chaos for many teams in the ACAC. From day one, she has done exactly what we have asked her to do both on and off the court. And because of that, her level of competition grew tremendously. Her offensive and defensive threat at the net awarded her ACAC All-Conference and ACAC Rookie of the Year. Rookie of the Year goes to Evangeline Zaya. All right, MVP. This year, we have selected two athletes for this award. Both these athletes hold strong leadership roles in our program. Since day one, they bought into the culture we are creating. They both bring unique leadership qualities to the team. We can always count on them, both, on both of them to show up and push for excellence every day. They show a true understanding of what it takes to be a championship team and work every day with the coaching staff to take the program down that path. Each of these players were crucial in every match this season. We can't express our gratitude to them enough. Women's Volleyball MVPs Gabby Capel and Aiden Armitage. Congratulations, women's volleyball. I'm now going to call on co-coaches Fabio Minoso and Chris Nellison to come and say a few words about the cross-country running and the indoor track program. And that's uh, Chris with that very beautiful tie. All right, there you are, gentlemen. Good night, everybody. Well, about a year ago, the cross-country and indoor track program faced cancellation due to uh, budgetary constraints. Despite learning about this cancellation before the end of the season, I decided not to inform the team uh, so they could maintain their focus and motivation. It was hard for me. After the indoor track uh, championships, emotions ran high. As I disclosed to the athletes, the program's bleak fate. However, instead of, uh, instead of accepting the defeat, led by Lydia, the team mobilized support from the various stakeholders, ultimately restating the program. This victory injected us with the determination for the next season. Although we finished sixth overall in the ACAC uh, Cross Country 2023-24 Championships, I, our athletes uh, delivered in standout performances. Koto Michel, for instance, narrowly missed nationals, demonstrating exceptional skill and dedication. Furthermore, this winter presented us with a remarkable achievement. Emma Wirkland secured two bronze medals in 60 meters and 300 meters during the indoor track cham championships. Congratulations, thank you. These accomplishments in both seasons exemplify our resilience, determination, and passion. As, a, as we reflect on our achievements, I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge an important, an important contribution for someone who, who has been instrumental to our journey. 
Chris Nelson. My former assistant coach, promoted to co-coach, and great friend. Chris, play, Chris played an integral role in the indoor track success. Chris, it's your turn. Thank you, Fabio. I would like to take a moment to thank all of you for joining us at tonight's Festival of Gold. It is great to see the student athletes, and just as importantly, so many supporters of Wolves Athletics. I would like to share a quote from Eric Little, a Scotsman who competed in the 1924 Olymp Paris Olympics. Francois might remember that year. In the 200 and 400 meters, he has a very incredible story that is worth looking into. His quote, in the dust of defeat, as well as in the laurels of victory, there is glory to be won if found if one has done their best. In sport, when we give our all, we can take, when we give our all to the task at hand, we can be proud. And that is what we're celebrating tonight. Our Wolves pride in the best that was given throughout the 2023-2024 ACAC competition season. I would also like to give specific thanks to a few individuals who made this season happen. Barb. Even though, some, even though some athletes may be pushing the deadlines on their eligibility paperwork, your work, your reminders, and even the occasional and necessary nagging allow these athletes con to continue competing in post-secondary sport. Thank you. Krista and Jeff. Where are they? Somewhere. They're here. The amount of work you put in the amount of work you put in to, to what feels like 24-7 makes the experience for these athletes. No one can train without gym bookings and track bookings. No one gets to compete without home game management and coordinating. Thank you. Jamie, your dedication to the student athlete's development never goes unnoticed, nor does your ability to withstand the constant chatter, <coughs> Jesse, <coughs> Kyron during team workouts in the HPC, or questionable music choices. <clears throat> Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> to everyone who holds a stake in NWP Wolves, on behalf of the Cross Country and Indoor Track Team, thank you for your support. To the athletes, remember, nothing comes easy. Training, winning, or losing, none of it. And really, would we want it any other way? Eric Little also said, no competitor who is really competitor ever cared for the easy task. There is no enjoyment in the game that is easily won. It is in that which you have to strain every muscle and sinew to achieve victory that provides joy. So with that, we'd like to announce the Cross Country and Indoor Track Awards recipients. We have a list of like 12, because we have two sports, men's and women's, so we're not going to talk about everybody, but they know why. Okay. Let's just start like Oscar, right? Um, uh, women's cross country, dedication to the pack and rookie of the year, Tanisha Humble. Humpke, Hunk Humpke. sorry. MVP, guess who? Lita Stanky. Now men's, men's, cr men's cross country, dedication to the pack, Jesse Luzel.
Cross Country Rookie of the Year, Bobby Gavin. And most valuable runner, Koto Michel. Women's Indoor Track Awards. Dedication to the pack, Sophia Stanky. Indoor Track Rookie of the Year, Ashley Hodel. In their track, most valuable runner, Emma Workland. Indoor Track Awards. Dedication to the pack, Bobby Gavin. Oh, it's Bobby again. <laughs> Is he still here? Oh, wow, he never left. Yeah, one more for you. All right, Men's Indoor Track Rookie of the Year, Kyron Noll. On. We're almost done. Almost As done. I said, we have 12. I swear. Men's indoor track, most valuable runner, Jesse Lozell. Thank you. So that's cross country running and indoor track. Thank you very much. And now we get into soccer. Please welcome Wolves soccer alumni and the head coach of the Wolves women's soccer and futsal teams, Catherine Ridgeway. <clears throat> I should just mention. Catherine, due to certain circumstances, came very late into the game, and she worked extremely hard to one just even to field the team. And then once they fielded the team, she worked them to perform above what we, anybody expected from them. Catherine had all kinds of adversities to deal with, and she came through it with flying colors. Ladies and gentlemen, Catherine Ridge. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, so as Francois mentioned, I came in late in the game, so thank you so much to all of the <laughs> athletic department. I know I didn't make things easy for you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. And to my assistants, Jessica Winterford, who isn't here today, 
did some really heavy lifting and recruiting and helping train the team. Mackie Kostiak and Randy Pied is here with me tonight. And of course, our late Aaron Tiller, who isn't with us here in person, but we all know he's cheering us on. Um, this team is very, very special to me. Um, like Francois said, there was walls put up. We had many meetings throughout the season, like do we even keep moving forward? Every wall that came up, these girls just ran straight through it. Like we can get through this cat, just believe in us. And I am so happy that we push through and you just have a special place in my heart forever, girls. Um, okay, we'll move on to the awards. So dedication to the pack for outdoor, Chantel Kirk. So, when we set up um, for building this team, like Francois said, we were really short. Um, and honestly, most days I thought it was an impossible task. Um, but as soon as I had my first meeting with Chantel, everything changed. Um, she signed without hesitation immediately. She started training. She sent me videos after workouts with her training like a wolf shirt on. And I don't think you realize it, but she kept me going and kept me pushing to keep building the team. So thank you, Chantel. Yeah. <laughs> It's so much more to say, but yeah. <laughs> okay, and then we'll just move on to dedication to the pack for futsal. Rayanne Lobb. <laughs> so by the time we reached futsal, we had an even shorter bench. Rayanne always put the team ahead of herself. She never missed practice. She never missed a workout. She was put in impossible situations in a game that she'd never played before. And she always jumped in, didn't question a thing, gave it her best, um, ran your grit and determination as far as all of us, every day. Yeah. All right, Rookie of the Year, no surprise for outdoor, Emma Ecclestone. <laughs> so again, this is a player who could have signed with any team in the ACAC. She signed on with a program before the coaching change happened, um, and she showed immense character in keeping her word and coming to join the pack. Um, no matter how rocky the path was this season, Emma faced every challenge head on, leading us with positivity and confidence. Um, as a first year player, she was our captain and rookie of the year. of the year, Natalie Kirk. <laughs> Natalie has grown into one of the strongest defenders in the ACAC. She played huge minutes during our futsal season, always leading inspiring our team with hard work and joy for the game. She has grown to step into a leadership role where we all look to her to bring energy and positive self-talk whenever we need it most. Uh, rookie of the year, Natalie Kirk. <laughs> Um, MVPs, outdoor, uh, we know Aaron's looking down on us right now and he's super pumped. Our MVP is Robin Alexandra. <laughs> so the MVP award is really tough for me. Um, I believe, well, we all believe, every player contributes in their own way. No way that's contributed is more or less significant than the other. Um, but when we look at an MVP for outdoor, it was Robin's 140 saves that made her top two in the ACAC. Her composure to a young squad that allowed us to play the style of football that we wanted. Knowing Robin had our back in net meant we were allowed to take risks and we were able to grow as a team. And you're not only an incredible athlete, but you're an incredible person and teammate. So proud of you. Okay, last one. Uh, our MVP for futsal, Emma Ecclestone. Get back up here. So there's no denying the absolute talent that is Emma. Um, she has beautiful feet, a powerful shot, and impressive tackling skills. She also has a love of the game and her teammates that's unmatched. Her dedication to strength and conditioning was inspirational. With five goals from defense and not getting a, a sub the entire futsal season, Emma Ecclestone.
Rookie coach. Men's soccer and futsal, will you please welcome World Soccer alumni and assistant coach Scott Fraser to the stage. <clears throat> so the head coach is David Rojas, and uh, he must be our one hell of an assistant coach, right? Eh? Uh, David Rojas is the head coach and couldn't make it tonight because he's attending the wedding of two Wolves athletes. One's a soccer goalie and the other one's a basketball player. So uh, he sent his speech and uh, I am honored to be able to present it to you on his behalf. So understand this is how he wrote it. So when I say I am David Rojas, you know that I'm not. Just in case. Hello everyone. My name is David Rojas. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we look alike. Ah, the hair's the same. <clears throat> and I'm thrilled to be the head coach of our men's soccer team. It's been quite the ride, going from player to coach in our program. Throughout the years, I've proudly represented the Wolves, and it has been an honor. I want to offer my sincerest thanks to Northwestern Polytechnic and the incredible staff that has helped to support me throughout my first year as a coach. With the many questions and uncertainty, I was able to lean on the expertise and advice from the incredible individuals that keep the athletic department running. To Lauren, Barb, Krista, and Jess, thank you for your support and guidance. A big thank you to my assistant coaches, Shantai and Scott. To Shantai, thank you for your steady wisdom and support. You have continued to be a steady support and you are always able to offer an insightful opinion that I never take for granted. To Scott Fraser, thank you for your passion, energy, and dedication to the team. Scott has been a mainstay of the men's soccer program for many years, as well as a friend to me. Your knowledge, experience, and humor are always appreciated. You are loved by everyone. I also want to extend a sincere thank you to Kat Ridgeway. We both experienced many similar challenges and successes through the year, and I am grateful for the support that I have received from her as a peer and as a friend. Success looked a little bit different for us this year. There were big questions this year whether or not there would be a men's soccer program, and it was truly the players' determination, resilience, and commitment that allowed this program to continue. Our success was measured more by player determination, commitment, resilience in defeat and friendship than it was in games won and lost. The players showed up for one another and for the program. We were able to compete and show sparks of brilliance for a promising future. This year we experienced a great loss in our NWP and Grand Prairie soccer community. Through the loss of our goalie coach, colleague, and, <clears throat> and most importantly, friend, Aaron Tiller. We will continue to do our best to recognize, remember, and honor the legacy that he has left us. Tiller brought an unmatched energy and passion to our program that will never be forgotten. At this time, I would like everyone to raise a glass to toast an incredible wolf, Aaron Tiller. May his presence, laughter, and love for the game always be remembered to Tiller. Thank you on behalf of David Rojas. Here now are the awards. First of all, dedication to the pack. That's gonna to go to Julianne Geravata. This award was made for this athlete. He is a talented, hardworking, resilient, and a relied on player. Though his abilities go far beyond his on-field contributions, this athlete is a third year player and a true leader. He can easily be described as the glue to the team, bringing, home, bringing everyone together. He is the player that was first to fight for the program to stay afloat, contacting and reaching out to players, and always keeping me in the loop. His dedication and passion for the sport allowed for the program to build, inspiring many new and young players. This athlete loves to talk to everyone and is well-loved throughout the NWP athletic community. His social confidence helps him to make connections to everyone quickly and with ease. This quality helped create a strong and fun team dynamic. I'm grateful to have his passion as a part of our program. Julian Geravata.
Rookie of the Year, Max Moore. The Rookie of the Year came in from our Grand Prairie Youth Programming and took on a huge role this season playing alongside and against seasoned players. Throughout the season, he showed immense growth in both confidence and his technical and tactical playing ability. This athlete continues to work at being an important and impactful player on our team. I have no doubts that with his hard work and dedication, he will continue to develop into a dominant player for our team and program. Rookie of the Year, Max Moore. MVP, Evan Bedard. This athlete's quiet leadership spoke volumes as he served as a remarkable team captain. He is a humble leader, and though he may not always be the loudest, when he speaks, all of the younger players listen as they respect his knowledge and experience. On the pitch, this athlete was a dynamic striker and a force to be reckoned with. He also played an important role as a goalie throughout his years, showing incredible versatility. He has been a player that the team relied on in various ways for all three years, and is a true example of a well-rounded athlete excelling in both sport and school. I have enjoyed the opportunity to both coach and get to know this athlete. He leads by example and is a consistent presence that the program will miss as he moves on to his future endeavors. Evan Bedard. And we have another MVP, it's another Evan, Evan Dirksen. There are important contributions on each end of the pitch, which is why I've chosen to include a second Most Valuable Player Award nomination. Without this player, we would not have been able to compete or find success in the ACAC League. His athleticism, talent, commitment, and dedication are unmatched. This athlete never misses a thing, whether it be a workout, practice, game, meeting, or class. He is always there giving his full energy and effort. No matter the score, he kept the team inspired and confident, having him as the last man in the net. He has been outstanding. This player topped the charts and had the most saves in the ACAC League. Even though a success, this athlete always remains humble and continues to work towards improving his craft. He also leads by example in the classroom, achieving a 4.0 each semester. I am fortunate to have as, an, as part of the team, his contributions go far beyond what the results and statistics show. Evan Dirksen. Futsal! Well, it's nice when you yell Evan, you get both of them. That's good. Futsal, dedication to the pack. Sean Whitby is dedication to the pack. The recipient of our Futsal season's dedication to the pack award embodies resilience, dedication, and an unyielding love for the game, despite facing numerous setbacks due to injuries. This athlete is motivated to succeed and he treats every practice as if it were a game, pushing himself and everyone around him to get better. His passion for soccer is contagious and his resilience is inspiring. His dedication to his own personal growth and his desire to help the team find success made a significant impact on our futsal season. Beyond his athletic abilities, I've had the pleasure of engaging in meaningful conversations with this athlete, getting to know him better on and off the court. I have no doubt that his continued growth and success will be a testament to his unwavering dedication and passion for the game. Sean Whitby. Thank you. Rookie of the Year, Terman Maines. The Rookie of the Year award for the futsal season is going to a player that consistently maintained a noticeable presence on the court. He improved a lot and became a very important piece in this team's dynamic and success in the futsal season. He is a strong and resilient player and he stepped up when the team needed him. His growth and improvement as a player is largely due to his positive, 
easygoing attitude. He always brings a sense of humor to the team and has a great mindset and is always open to learning and improving. Terman Baines. MVP, Pedro Schindler. This athlete breathed new life into our team following a challenging fall season. When he joined us for the futsal season, his impact was immediate and immense. Not only did he excel on the court, but he also brought a positive energy that uplifted the entire team, constantly pushing others to strive for more. His talent did not go unnoticed. Opposing teams and coaches alike took notice of his remarkable technical ability and influence on the game. Yet, despite his abilities, he remains grounded, displaying a strong work ethic and a humble attitude. Always striving for improvement, his dedication to self-betterment is evident in his consistent presence and positivity at every training session. He's not just focused on his own growth. He's also quick to offer encouragement and valuable advice to his teammates, always prioritizing the team's success above all. Pedro Schindler. And that's men's soccer and futsal. Women's basketball, please welcome head coach Bill Bradley for a few words. And the gifting of the awards. Thank you to all the other coaches, uh, the staff on helping set everything up, everybody that helps us do uh, our job every single day, supporters, alumni, everybody. Thank you so much. This year was a tough year. My mental health was pushed to its limits. We struggled on court, and at times we lost our way. I found myself clinging to the little wins to the small victories that get you to the next day, to the next practice, the next workout. These are some of those moments. I got to have morning coffee with soccer superstars Evan and Julian at the Wolves basketball tournament where they didn't mind me just talking at 6 a.m. with them. Uh, getting to hear Francois's commentary every Monday after game day and just loving his color commentary for our games. Having four players achieve a 4.0. Four, beautiful. 38 players going to gold status in study hall. 38 players, well done. That's across all teams. Getting to ride the bus in a dog hammock and not have blown out hips by uh, Monday morning. Team dinners, team breakfast, team lunch a full snack bin, uh, leftover smoothies after practices, all of those are great. Uh, getting to talk shit to Draves, always a fantastic thing. Having multiple players walk by the office and say hello, always generous with their voice. Sarah's chalkboard art in study hall, an amazing artist, always looked forward to seeing what she came up with. Seeing our all-star coaches interact with young, new athletes and engage with them and mentor and be good role models. Getting to practice, practice my mindfulness while mopping and sweeping the floor, trying to keep it up. I look forward to that on our new floor as well. The September sessions, working with local athletes, bringing in student athletes, from all, all the high schools to come and play with us, to some share court with us in September. The free food at high school tournaments, the times I didn't break down and cry in front of the team, and the times I got to share tears with them. Getting to see the new flair that was put on the Wolf of the Weekend chain, via keychains, Sharpie markers, 
on tape or it looks like ankle tape. Sometimes it was beautiful and sometimes it was not. And getting to be a part of a great department and friends and coworkers with good people. I appreciate everybody. So let's get to the awards. Dedication to the pack, Michaela Porteous. I have full confidence in Mac's reliability, whether it's volunteering, being accessible, completing tasks, or dedicating herself to her craft. Her level of organization not only ensures her own efficiency, but also extends to benefit myself and her program. She has invested countless hours of hard work, often without recognition, and today I express my heartfelt gratitude to Mac for her invaluable contributions to our program. Thank you, Mac. Thank you, Matt. Rookie of the Year, Olivia Rosinski. <laughs> Olivia embodies the prototypical athlete coveted by all coaches for their programs. She exudes kindness, diligence, team investment, and unwavering commitment to her personal development. I feel incredibly fortunate to witness her evolution into a stronger player with each passing day as we work together. Well done, Olivia. <laughs> Choosing the MVP is never an easy task. We analyze statistics, we review the game film, we look at team dynamics and evaluate commitment. This year, Gracie Reschke checked all those boxes. She enhanced our team's performance on court with her increased scoring role and her presence as a unifying voice. Her journey to MVP is nothing short of remarkable. A testament to her perseverance and dedication over five years from a red shirt to our MVP. Thank you, Gracie. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bill. I never know what that guy's going to say. Men's basketball. Please welcome the head coach, Evan Loy. And with him, the ever lovely manager, Chris Draves, to assist Evan with this task. Gotta love the shirt. Have fun. It's good to see everyone tonight. Uh, athletes, coach, coaches, special guests. Uh, glad to see my guys here. Surprised they didn't forget about fog. But again, there's free food, so it looks like they showed up. Uh, the season kicked off with an exhibition tournament in Vancouver, though not as glamorous as Hawaii. It was an awesome experience for the team. Surprisingly, all our men's basketball players remembered their ID IDs, unlike some of our counterparts on the women's team. Unfortunately, Bill couldn't join us initially, so Draves and I stepped up in support, Megan and the women's team during their first exhibition game. As the regular season started, we experienced a mix of highs and lows. One high was a win where the Wolves scored 116 points, a crazy accomplishment because the team didn't score over 90 the rest of the year. <clears throat> this game also seen some individual accomplishments where Manny scored over 1,000 career points and Daniel going one for one from three. I'll let you all be the judge of which is more impressive. <laughs> the Wolves later faced the number 14 team in the country, Lethbridge Kodiaks, which was an exciting game where we trailed the majority of the game until the final two minutes down nine, where the Wolves went on a 13 to one run to win the game. In the second semester, several players stepped up into larger roles with little time to adjust, but they excelled nonetheless. John emerged as a starter and has had a standout revenge game against his former team, Medicine Hat, despite missing a couple of games due to a concussion, which was caused by a Manny turnover. Brandon showcased his skills with a career high 15 points in our final regular season game while also starting multiple games. 
Daniel took on an increased responsibility both offensively and defensively after his fellow BC boys flew the coop. Mason displayed a newfound confidence in his mid-range shot and more never-ending ball fakes. Ben, Tristan, and Caden adapted to their new roles and showed growth and success in the second semester. Tony remained one of the league's top three-point shooters and defenders. And then there's Skyler, also known as Le Skyler, who marches to the beat of his own drum, never one to be told what to do or think. But when, when he's in Le Skyler mode, we see glimpses of greatness, although very short glimpses. <laughs> And who can forget about the Time Lords, Manny and Chris? They spent three years together and I think they were late to every bus departure and team film session. Their classic excuse, we were stuck in the elevator. Despite their timekeeping challenges, when it came to games, they never failed to deliver. Their dynamic combination was like SpongeBob and Patrick and it carried us all year. Overall, men's basketball had a successful year, finishing third in the North. Although we lost in our play-in game, the guys battled hard all year. Uh, I now want to give out some special thank yous. First off, I want to thank my coaching staff, Draves, Troy, Lucas, and Quinn. Uh, their dedication and effort have been instrumental in supporting both myself and our athletes. I do think Draves gets all the credit for ACAC Coach of the Year, and this may solidify his status as the GOAT of ACAC managers. A uh, huge shout out to Jess, Krista, and Barb for their outstanding comp comp contributions on game days, behind the scenes, and going above and beyond to support our athletes. Your hard work and dedication do not go unnoticed, and we are incredibly grateful for everything you do. Ron and Lauren, thank you for providing guidance and support throughout the year. Although, Lauren, I'm still a little upset. Drave's got to go to Hawaii, and I didn't. <laughs> and Bill, what can you say about this guy? Dude is a fantastic road trip buddy, hell of a coworker, friend, and coach. Thank you for everything you do. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Lastly, I want to thank my family, Nash, Kinley, and Taylor. Your unwavering support and encouragement mean the world to me. And I'm grateful for the sacrifices you make to allow me to pursue my passion. Your love and understanding fuel my dedication to the game, and I couldn't do it without you. In conclusion, a big thank you to this group. It has been an incredibly rewarding experience. Their dedication, hard work, and positive attitude have made them truly special to work with. I sincerely hope that each member of this team has not only honed their skills and skills on the court, but also grown pers personally and forged lifelong friendships. Together we've learned, grown, and shared unforgettable moments. It has been a privilege to be a part of their journey, and I'm confident that the bonds formed and lessons learned will last for years to come. All right. I did it. All right, dedication to the pack. Men's basketball recognizes outstanding performances at practice, the player practice award known as POP. This year, Daniel not only secured the most POP wins, but also served as a role model both on and off the court. He led by example with his work ethic and dedication to all as aspects of being a wolf. Congratulations, Daniel. Rookie of the Year. This year we had a talented group of first-year athletes, including Brandon, Tristan, Liam, and Caden. Each of them showed remarkable growth and development throughout the year, making valuable contributions both in practice and in competition. This year, Brandon stood out for his exceptional academic achievements and on-court performance. Congratulations, Brandon.
All right, MVP. I think, we all know who, I think we all know who wins this award, but before we celebrate Manny's achieve, achievements, I want to make a moment to acknowledge his partner in crime, Chris. While Manny often receives the spotlight and accolades, it's important to recognize the integral, integral role that Chris has played in our team's success. Without him, many of Manny's accomplishments, and by extension our team's achievements, wouldn't have been possible. Um, Manny, Manny's NWP career boasts over 13, 1,300 points, 900 rebounds, 201 blocks, and 110 steals. In terms of NWP all-time standings, Manny ranks third in scoring, first in blocks, first in rebounds, and second in steals. He also holds several records in the ACAC, including all-time blocks, most blocks in a single game, and most defensive rebounds in a single game, and is second in rebounding. It's truly been an outstanding career, and Manny stands as one of the best to ever don the NWP jersey. Now with another successful season under his belt, the question arises, how about running it back next year? <laughs> Congratulations, Manny MVP. Thank you. Thank you. Those are the team awards. I must admit, <clears throat> there's two things. My son is the uh, announcer here at all of the home games, and he does uh, soccer as well. And it's uh, the athletes have provided some outstanding opportunities to scream into the mic. Maddie, you know, and it's a dunk or it's those blocks that he has uh, made but all of the athletes when I look around we see mostly volleyball and basketball and so when I see those volleyball teams and the crushing of the ball and we get to say even on the webcast kill by Evangeline Zaya and then we s stretch the name it's fun it's just a riot to do that and so if you keep doing those things, we're going to keep calling them out that way and yelling and screaming as much as we can, uh, get the fans behind it. So congratulations to all. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to move on now because we have the ACAC All-Conference team, and I'm going to ask Lauren Hale Miller to come forward. Uh, we're going to recognize those athletes from the Wolves that have attained ACAC All-Conference status. Uh, <clears throat> We had some outstanding performances, and we have two athletes that have attained that, and I'm going to ask them both to come forward, and uh, I was going to say receive their award, but I think it's in the mail. Anyway, please welcome from women's volleyball, Evangeline Zaya, and from men's basketball, Emmanuel Iloka, who's got his arms around Chris Graves and Evelyn. There he comes. So if you ever want to feel short, come and stand by this crew. My goodness. Congratulations. The other thing, we're not going to ask him to come up, but we really do want to congratulate men's basketball coach Evan Lloyd on receiving the ACAC North Coach of the Year. And now it's time for the Rookies of the Year. We're going to ask our President and CEO, Dr. Vanessa Shane, to please come up, and then uh, we'll, uh, she'll present the awards to them. We're going to start off with the Female Rookie of the Year, and how we're doing it is that we just announce who the nominees are, and the only person that has to come up is when we say who the winner is. So first of all, uh, Female Rookie of the Year, the nominees are from women's basketball, Olivia Rosinski. Women's cross country running and indoor track, Emma Workland. Women's soccer and futsal, Emma Ecclestone. And women's volleyball, Evangeline Zaya. 
This year's Female Rookie of the Year is a tie. First of all, from women's volleyball, Evangeline Zaya. And from women's indoor track, Emma Workland. She's having another picture taken. Congratulations. Evangeline and Emma, Rookies of the Year. The nominees now for the Male Rookie of the Year Award are men's cross country running, Bobby Gavin. Men's soccer, Max Moore. Men's futsal, Terman Baines. Men's volleyball, Logan Halatchuk. Men's basketball, Brandon Gillis. And this year, the Male Rookie of the Year is from men's volleyball, Logan Halachuk. Congratulations, Logan. And now the Athletes of the Year, and Vanessa will present these awards. First of all, for the Female Athlete of the Year, the nominees are from women's basketball, Raylene Badger, women's cross country running, Lydia Stanky, women's volleyball, Evangeline Zaya, and women's soccer and futsal, Emma Ecclestone. This year's Female Athlete of the Year is from women's volleyball, Evangeline Zaya. All right, congratulations, Evangeline. All right, now, Male Athlete of the Year. The nominees are Men's basketball, Emmanuel Iloka. Men's soccer, Evan Bedard. Men's futsal, Pedro Schindler. Men's volleyball, Justice Bigstone. And men's cross country running, Colton Michel. This year's male athlete of the year is from men's basketball, Emmanuel Iloka. He's got a smile on his face. Male Athlete of the Year, Emmanuel Iloka. All right. Congratulations, Manny. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, that concludes the awards. Now, would you please welcome fifth year student athlete, women's basketball player, Gracie Reschke, to give the graduating athlete's salutation. And I must admit, doing some of the webcasts, it's always a fun time when Gracie is shooting those threes to scream out her name, Gracie Reschke Three. Ladies and gentlemen, Gracie Reschke. Hi. I gave a lot of thought about whether or not I would choose to submit my name to speak tonight. I wanted to make sure that I had something of value to offer other athletes in sharing my experience. My hope is that you are able to take something, whether it be big or small, as I feel that I can speak to what it means to be a wolf. A little bit about my journey to becoming a member of the women's basketball team. I was invited to attend ID camp during my senior year of high school. I had dreams of playing college basketball, but I never thought I was good enough to make the roster. At ID camp, I was not one of the girls selected to join the team. I waited to speak with the coach anyways while all the girls celebrated signing with scholarships around me. I walked into her office and told her that she simply couldn't cut me and that I was not ready to be done. I said that I would not be leaving without a red shirt spot at minimum. <laughs> she listened and said that I had swayed her enough to give me a chance. To this day, it is one of the bravest things I've ever done for myself. Fast forward to season, she ended up taking the starting lineup with her to Red Deer, and I snuck my way onto the roster. Only, <laughs> I didn't play very much. My first college game, I played one minute, and I traveled. <laughs> Not exactly a stellar performance, 
but I worked with a shooting coach and I practiced every day to bring up my minutes. I decided that if I was going to play, I needed to become a point guard. So that's what I did. I was making steady strides and improving when COVID hit at the end of the season. During the COVID year, I was forced to come back to Grand Prix for nursing, only no one was here. I walked past the locked gym every day and lived in dorms alone. At that point, I was the only member of the team committed to coming back. I pursued legislation and pushed for them to open our gyms with no success. The only thing left to do was to find ways to keep improving. When they finally let us play, we lost half our starting lineup again to the mandatory vaccinations. This was devastating, but opened up a spot for me to start. The very first game, I came out and had my first double-digit game and was the leading scorer for the team. I don't think anyone expected it from me, especially since I wasn't even supposed to start in that game. My purpose in sharing these stories is to highlight that the journey is what you make it. Steak Doucette said it best when they said, you never want to lose your connection to the daily grind. I was never supposed to play college basketball. I was never supposed to be a point guard. I wasn't even supposed to start in that game. I was told numerous times that being a nursing student while playing a collegiate sport just was not doable. Not only did I do it, I am now in the top five for career three-pointers made for NWP's women's basketball. I set the record for most three-pointers hit in a game, and I'm leaving as a graduate nurse and a captain. I think that is what being a wolf is. It is doing your best when your best is called upon, protecting the pack, and working for something bigger than yourself. It is about pushing yourself well past where you initially started. I would like to share a message I wrote to myself in my rookie year. It was written February 22, 2020, when I sat out of our win against Kings. On days like today, I think it is important to remind yourself how badly you wanted to be here. You may not have had the season you wanted, you may not have been part of the team win, but you're here. You have years to go. Do it for all the little dogs out there with big dog potential. At the end of the day, this is why I chose to speak. I am speaking for every 13th man to come onto a roster. I am here to tell them that it is possible, that they can do it. Don't listen to everyone saying no, because if you love your sport enough, every goal is achievable. Before ending my speech, I would like to thank some people who have helped me on my journey to playing college basketball. I would like to thank my family for instilling my love for the game and for supporting me along the way. Thank you all the teammates who came before me and showed me what it means to be a college athlete. Thank you to all the rookies coming after me for giving me a reason to keep pushing. You know who you are. A special thank you to Raylene Badger for riding it out with me all these years and for being my rock, confidant, and best friend. Thank you to all the coaches who have offered feedback and encouraged my growth through the years. Finally, to Coach Bill, thank you for having patience with me on the days I couldn't leave nursing outside the gym. Thank you for letting me cry in your office. And thank you for fostering my growth as a player and a leader. I am leaving a better person having been a part of this program. I know we're all eager on to get on with the night, so I'd like to end the night with this. For the past four years, I have led the team cheer for women's basketball. In the spirit of passing on the torch, I would like to invite you to cheer with me one last time. On our team, we say wolves on 2-1-2. Two, two. I hope you all join me, because this will be really awkward if I do it alone. <laughs> okay, are we ready? Wolves on 2-1-2! Two, two. Thank you. Thank you, Gracie. Well, <clears throat> what an evening this has been. Our congratulations to all the coaches and athletes on their success this past season. This season has been a difficult one, but it has concluded on a very positive and optimistic note. There is now an environment of positivity, of happiness, of optimism, a realization that a bright and new opportunity exists. A new and bright era is upon us. For this to happen, we must thank some folks. First, our thanks to Vanessa, who has demonstrated courage, strength, and vision in her first year as president and CEO. NWP and Wolves Athletics are both better positioned to move forward in their pursuit of being an outstanding post-secondary institution and the best athletic program in Canada. With Vanessa and her team's support, a plan will be established for the Wolves that will be positive, growth and team-oriented, and community-minded. There is an excitement among the Wolves Athletics program that is in place thanks to the actions taken by Vanessa. Because of you and your courage, an opportunity has been created for the Wolves 
to start fresh and build anew. Thank you, Vanessa. My sincere thanks to the staff of Wolves Athletics, Lauren Hale Miller, Krista Mitchell, Barb Schmier, and Jess Picard, and Chris Nellison, and all their staff for the tremendous work that they do. You ensure the facilities the teams need are ready and prepared for the teams to do their training and play their games. Despite the issues with some of the facilities, you worked hard to get them the best they could be. You also use your expertise and experience to ensure the events of Wolves Athletics are organized to be the best they can be. It is because of the work, commitment, and dedication you provide, the NWP home games are some of the best in the province. Other than that webcast announcer who talks way too much. Thank you for all that you do, and we know that you will be a big part in making the 2024 ACAC Women's and Men's Soccer Conference Championships one of the best ever. Thank you. <clears throat> the coaches are very special people. They are the ones who set the environment for their team to achieve or surpass their potential as players, as teams, and as good human persons. They continually work to find solutions to any issues or problems that their teams and players are confronted with. They strive to find ways and means to make players better, make the practices, games, and other team functions enjoyable while being educational. Knowing of the adversities they have faced this season, their own performance, and the performance of their teams identifies how remarkable they really are. It is an absolute pleasure to work with them and watch them perform. Coaches, you are truly amazing. Thank you for being resilient, for persevering, and for the strength you exhibited. The future is extremely bright for you and for us. Thank you. A special thanks to coaches Catherine and David for coming at the last minute, <clears throat> taking on a huge challenge, putting together soccer teams, and then getting them to perform above themselves. Our thanks also to Ron Thompson for stepping up and stepping into the role of men's volleyball coach. You saved the season for these young men and what a season they had. <clears throat> I want to thank a, a special set of athletes, uh, the goalies, Evan Dirksen and Robin Alexandrick. Your performance was a strong testament to your commitment to the game and your position, and of the guidance and teaching of Aaron Tiller. Thank you. I know he's smiling down upon you right now. To the athletes, my favorite group of people, it is absolutely fun to watch you play, to see you working hard in practices, and to see how much you grow each and every season. You are the reason we come to work each day. You give us purpose in our lives. You give us contentment as we see you grow. Know that you do bring joy to so many people by the way you play and the persons that you are. And I get wonderful pleasure in talking about you and your talents on the webcast. Thank you for the gift of you to Wolves Athletics. There will be celebrations tonight, and I want you to enjoy the evening. Please watch out for each other and make sure everyone gets home safe. For tomorrow is the start of the new era, the time for you to build new dreams, to set new goals and aspirations for you as an athlete and as a person. We know you will achieve great things in your life. Our wish is that you will reflect on your time with the Wolves and your reflections are of good and fond memories. Our hope is that you will always remember, once a wolf, always a wolf. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance at tonight's Wolves Festival of Gold. One more thing. All of the athletes, you have to come on the stage for a picture. All of the athletes. All.
Thank <laughs> you. 